Hello everyone. Let us look into this very beautiful problem called ABC path and what we need to do is we need to find out the maximum length of the consecutive characters in a given matrix okay in this question and we can traverse horizontally vertically diagonally in all the directions so if you are saying vertically we can go vertically down or vertically up similarly we can go horizontally left or horizontally down and that's true also for diagonal okay so so we need to find out the maximum consecutive characters that can exist in this particular matrix okay and so i have already written this matrix let us see how how do we traverse here and what is the what is the solution to this particular question so the the consecutive characters always start from a okay so this has already been mentioned in the question so what it says is that if it starts at if we say that we start we are we are starting at this particular a then we go from a to b okay we can go from a to b we can go from b to c we can go from c to d okay so the answer in this case is Four because we have traversed four characters a b c and d now there is another a which is present here so we can go from a to b b to c okay and c to d okay so the answer again in this case is four because we have traversed four characters here okay and now there is this third third path that we can also follow which is a to b b to c and c to d the answer again in this case is Four because we have traversed four characters A, B, C, and D. Now, one very important observation that we need to make here is that for this C here, okay, for this C here, we have come to this C twice, okay, one from this A at zero comma zero, and the other from this A, which is three comma zero, right? Three comma zero. So the, there are two different paths that actually goes to this particular C here. Which means that the path from this C is actually a redundant path. There are multiple sources that are solving the same path again and again, and we actually see two arrows here, right? We actually see two arrows going here, which means we have solved for this path twice. Okay. Now imagine, imagine for a moment that our graph was looking something like this. So A, B, E, C. D, E, F, G, okay, D again, B, A, B, C, okay, now in this case, we have, we go from A to B, B to C, C to D, C to D, we can also go D to E, E to F, F to G, okay, and then again, the other path is A to B, B to C, C to D, C to D, okay, then D to E, E to F, F to G, okay, and similarly the third third path is this guy A to B, B to C, C to D, right. So what what we really now see is the impact of solving the same problem again and again. So we solve it here once, we solve it twice, we solve it three times, we solve it four times, we solve it five times on a on a grid which is very big. This can be a problem and this is where we need to apply our memoization. Okay, so for a problem that has already been solved, we do not solve it again. So the first step to this problem is to actually create a graph out of it. Okay, so I will not go into the details of the structures of the graph, the node that we are putting, but we'll just go through how do we actually create a graph. So from our original problem, the matrix was A, B, E. C, F, G, B, D, H, A, B, C. Okay. So now what we need to do is for every single element, for every single element, we look into or let's take this another example. Okay. For every single element, we look into all its possible neighbors. Okay. We look into all its possible neighbors. And what we do is we figure out the neighbors that this guy can actually go to. So this F, it cannot, it can only go to one place, right? It can only go to one place, which is this path F G. Okay. So the only neighbor that F can have is G, which means for every single element in this matrix, what we are looking is for the element 
which is in sitting in the neighbor of that particular element and is also a consecutive element okay so if we take another example if we take another example so if we take this a from this a we can go to a to b and a to b here while we can definitely go from a to c this path will not be valid because d is not consecutively next element to a so only these two b's are okay so the a, a is going to have two neighbors a and b while this f is going to have only a single neighbor which is this g here similarly this a is only going to have this one neighbor which is b okay so in this fashion we actually go ahead and create the graph okay now the next step okay so what is the next step here now that our graph is created it says that the source of the tree resides at a the question says that the source of the tree resides at a okay so what we need to now do is we need to iterate over every single element in this graph okay we need to iterate over every single element in this graph and figure out where the a's are so if this is an a okay what we are going to do is so let's say we also create a uh, create a matrix here okay so i create a matrix here and let's say we are going to populate some values okay and then so initially initially let us assume that we have kept a value of minus 1 to all the places what so what we are saying is that the height of every single element in this particular matrix is minus 1 okay now we we go to a okay we go to this a here and we say that because this is the root of the tree we say that this has got a height of 1 okay now we start looking at all the neighbors of this this graph okay this particular node so we go from a to b okay and what we now say is that if if the height of b is smaller than what if the height of b is smaller than height of a plus 1 okay because with every single traversal every single traversal which is happening between two nodes the height is increasing by 1 okay so if if we see that this b has a height of minus 1 it actually indicates that we have not seen this problem ever because even if we traverse through this particular node once the height is going to be set correctly okay irrespective of whatever node it is coming from okay it doesn't matter because b can only be traversed from a and the height of b can always be 2 it cannot be anything more than 2 it cannot be anything less than 2 okay so minus 1 indicates that we have never seen this problem so we need to go ahead and solve this okay but at the same time what we do is we correct the value here okay so we set the value as 2 at this particular point okay now we start traversing from b so the only neighbor that we can go from b to b is this c here okay and c is currently having a value of minus 1 okay c is currently having a value of minus 1 so what we need to do is we need to correct the value and the correct value here will be 2 plus 1 which is 3 okay now from c we traverse to its neighbor or its child which is d okay so d again we see here is that it is assigned a value of minus 1 which is uh, which means that we have never visited this problem so we are going to assign it a value of 4 okay so we are going to assign it a value of 4 now this d do not have any neighbor okay any neighbor whatsoever so what we are going to say is that the maximum consecutive okay element equals to so let's say we take two variables okay one is the maximum consecutive element and one is the local consecutive element okay consecutive element so local consecutive element is for every single traversal every single independent traversal that we do from a so local local consecutive maximum right now is 4 okay and let's say we initialize the maximum consecutive elements by minus 1 so at the completion of every single tree we see that if maximum consecutive element is smaller than local consecutive element then we just update the value so in this case what we are going to do is we are going to update the value of this minus 1 to 4 okay so we are going to make it 4 after this first iteration now again we are going to set it to minus 1 for second iteration okay so now we again start traversing in the in the matrix and see what 
what is the next a if at all we have so we find out that there is actually a a here so the first step was to set this value to one so okay so we set this value to one here now we go from a to b okay let's say we go to this b and we see that this b here has been assigned a value of minus one which means we have never really visited this problem okay we have never really visited this problem so what it actually does is we assign a value of two to this guy okay we assign a value of two to this guy so yeah so we assign a value of two to this guy now comes the interesting part okay now comes the interesting part which is we go from this b to c okay we go from this b to c and we see that this problem has already been solved okay so we see that this problem has already been solved so we do not actually go ahead and attempt to solve this problem right okay so we do not solve this problem here so what is the temp what is the local consecutive element height until now this value is 2 okay so until now we have gone until this place and we have said that the value is 2 now b cannot proceed any further because c is something that we said we will not explore okay so the loop ends here okay this particular loop ends here and we see that the local consecutive element value is actually less than the maximum consecutive element value so we do not update anything okay now in the third loop for the third third path which is here okay for the third part which is here we again go ahead and set this to minus one or let's say this time we'll set it to one because we have already seen this node one so this value is already set okay and we go to this b here we go to this b here and we see that the value is minus one in the matrix so we go ahead and set the correct value we set it to 2 and now we can go from this b to this c okay and we see that in the matrix in the matrix here the incorrect value is set so we are going to set it correctly we will set it to we will set it to 3 okay and what we now need to do is we go from this c to d but this d is something that we have already seen right so we we will not go ahead and update or let's say solve for d okay so the maximum height that we get in this case is 3 okay but 3 is again smaller than 4 so 3 is again smaller than 4 so max consecutive element max consecutive element remains same as 4 now we again traverse in the in this matrix to find any other a if possible we do not find any other a so the answer that we have it have at maximum consecutive element becomes our answer right so the answer at this particular place is 4 for this particular question similarly had we taken this particular graph here then there would have been a lot more participating values that we would have only solved for once you would not have visited those value more than once okay actually what we can do is we can quickly go ahead and solve for this uh, other graph that i made so this was a b e c d f so a b e c d f b d g a b c b d g a b c okay so equivalently i am going to make a matrix okay and initial value assigned to any any person in this matrix is minus one okay so this is minus one minus one minus one minus one so minus one minus one minus one minus one minus one yeah now we started this a here okay we assign it the correct value of one we go to this b we assign it the correct value of one okay we go to this c we assign it the correct value of one we go to this d we assign it the correct value of one we go to this e sorry sorry uh, some mistake here we assign it the correct value of 2, 3, 4, yeah, now it's fine. We assign it the correct value of 5. From E, we go to F. 
we assign it the correct value of 6 and if we go to g and we assign it the correct value of 7 okay now from this c we can go to this d here okay and we assign it the correct value of 4 in the matrix okay right now the maximum that we have figured out is 7 okay as per our algorithm now there is no further place that we go we can go from this d so we stop and we find out the next a so the next a is this we assign it the correct value of 1 we assign it the correct value of 1 from a we go to this b okay so we go to this b we assign it the correct value of 2 and now from this b we can go to this c here okay we go to this c the c has already been solved so we do not assign any for any any further values okay we do not solve for any further problems and the local maxima that we get was 2 2 is smaller than 7 so 7 remains as the biggest biggest consecutive length that we have seen until now now we go from this a to b we assign it the correct value of 2 okay similarly we assign we assign b to c this as a correct value of 3 now c can go to this d but we have already solved for d so we are not going to solve here so solve for this d okay so the maximum value that we see for this particular graph is 3 so 7 was the maximum that we have seen so the answer actually becomes 7 so this in this case if we have solved for any character any particular character or any particular i j then we do not solve for it again okay so that is where the memoization comes into place and because we are making we are making a graph and we are doing some sort of some sort of uh, depth first search this is also inclusive of the dfs algorithm in place which makes this question a little beautiful when we have to use some of our tree knowledge to be able to solve this question okay cool guys this was it for uh, this particular question i hope you have understood the question you have understood the solution and you have also liked the video please click on like button please subscribe to my channel and please share your feedbacks about my videos in the comments thank you so much